Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the American Strategy Program at the New America Foundation. I'm here with Leo Hindry, who's managing partner of Intermedia Advisors and the chairman of the U.S. Economy Smart Globalization Initiative at the New America Foundation. Leo, thanks for taking a few minutes. No, thanks for having me. You're, Come you're, you're going to be at the Center for American Progress with this joint program with the Apollo Alliance today, talking about the green economy, about job creation, and my understanding is that you're going to sort of poke at some some bubbles in, in the thinking in that. Can you tell us, give us a quick preview of what you're going to be highlighting? You know, I think the issue, Steve, is sort of a, sort of a, a cart before the horse, horse before the cart. Uh, everybody is intrigued about the opportunities implicit in the green economy. Every developed nation, and China as well, have, have put all of their focus, all of their energies around the green economy. For some, it will be very fruitful. For others, it'll be a complete bust. But what has happened is we forget the underpinnings of a successful green economy. A green economy is, is a very manufacturing-oriented economy. And, and when I said it's a kind of a cart and horse issue, what we haven't done in this country for decades now is have a genuine manufacturing policy, an industrial policy that matches those of our trading partners. So when we, we develop all this enthusiasm out of the administration saying, well, the answer is to be found in the green economy, it can't be if we don't first have a, a manufacturing policy that mirrors right. theirs, and we don't have policies that mirrors theirs in other contexts. I mean, President Obama, Energy Secretary Chu, and others have talked about millions and millions of jobs in the, in the green economy sector. And as I looked at it, there are two, two data points that really jumped out. One, in today's economy, you only have about 750,000 jobs that would classify in that area. And second, over the last four to five years, there's, we, we're running a massive green trade imbalance with countries like China, Germany, the Scandinavian countries, and how would how do you think we need to turn that around? I know we need a manufacturing strategy, but aren't we the the more money we put into the green sector right now? That's just going like a sieve into the job manufacturing base of other countries. Uh, well said, and and I think that what we need to do is acknowledge what's possible here and what's not possible, and what's the agenda. Hmm. The agenda is to create quickly about 21 million jobs. That's a massive number. Uh, some in the administration use a number as low as 9, maybe 10 million to get this economy back on track. We know the answer is 21 million. So against a base of 750,000, which is the current sort of green economy, it's inconceivable that you can get to 21 million from 750,000. I, I don't want to poo-poo the number of jobs that will come in the green side, but it's a small fraction of what we need, and it's a small fraction of the agenda we should have instead. And the points you make about where will these dollars go, we're going to spend uh, as a U.S. government about $80 billion as part of stimulus on, uh, on green, mm -hmm. with no limitations as to where that money uh, is spent. And let me get back to that in a second. The Chinese, by comparison, will spend $400 billion all in this year alone, their, their, their sort of apples to apples stimulus number is about 270 billion. And we know for a fact that 100% of those dollars will stay in China. I don't know what percentage of our 80 billion will stay here in the U.S. So we, we don't need just a policy. We don't need just an attitude. We need policies that uh, uh, say, look, w w buy domestic, make it part of an integral all of government, all of industry sort of manufacturing policy. And you can have a bi-domestic program, particularly in procurement, that, that doesn't violate WTO obligations. As Absol ab yeah. Absolutely. We, uh, late last year, 20 nations met in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. 19 had bi-domestic programs of one sort or another. We didn't. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're playing catch up. The, what happens every time we talk about job creation is the offshore interests, the multinational corporations and these trading partners themselves, through their press capabilities, their lobbying capabilities, label those of us who bring the issues forward as protectionists. Mm. Yet they never talk about the, the absence of reciprocity. We have never asked for in this endeavor anything that other countries don't already have and, don't, are, and aren't already using against us. When you, when you, today when you give your talk, I think there's some other, other people on the panel as well, what do you feel, given your interactions in Washington, is the receptivity to this sort of strategy of, of getting, of talking about industrial strategy? These are real taboo subjects and beginning to sort of say, we realize we're in a global economy, but yet the United States needs to begin taking stock 
of how it's going to maintain high high wage, high value added, highly innovative uh, manufacturing and, and development sector. How, are people hearing it, or do you find that the old tensions about not wanting to go that down that path are still here? Uh, not enough right people are hearing it. Certainly there are great women and men in Congress who get it. But they're a fraction of the overall Congress. And I think the biggest obstacle right now is actually the administration itself. And, and, and looking back in, in the past, is when, when did we find something similar? I remember for years being told that once the United States fixed its education system, everything would be rosy. Well, we know that's a heavy, heavy lift. Mm. And it was used as an excuse not to address the jobs issues for decades. Mm. What's happening here in the, in the green economy is we're saying, gosh, all the answers are to be found in the green economy. Just, just do that and everything will be fine. Don't, you don't have to go back to sort of industrial America. You don't have to go back to the issues of income inequality. You don't have to talk about taxes. Just, just do the green economy. Well, we will, we will some years from now find out that it's a tiny, tiny fraction of the 21 million or so jobs we need to find. And it will be a tinier fraction if we don't couple it with policies that, as I said, mirror those of our major trading partners. Leo, I just I want to thank you for your time today. And I, I remember reading your book, It Takes a CEO, where you sort of talked about the stakeholder responsibilities, not just of you know the management of a company and the workers of the company, but of the government, of capital, and really looking at it. It was a very interesting uh, formulation. So I hope you keep at it. Thanks very much no, for joining thanks us Thanks for having me. Thank on. you.